In 2014, just before the Tour de France, Trek released a groundbreaking, super lightweight bike called the Amonda. Three years on, just prior to the Tour de France, Trek are releasing version two, a brand new disc specific version of the Amonda. But not just this, we've got brand new rim brake versions as well. Are they light? Oh yeah, they're light, super light. Now, last time at the launch, I was there to get all the information, but I was unfortunately stuck in a neck brace. And so I didn't actually get to ride the Trek Imonda. This time though, things are different, very different. Version one of the Amonda was startlingly light at just 690 grams for the frame. And at the time, it was the lightest production frame in the world. This one though, is lighter still. For the disc brake version, it's just 665 grams for the frame. And the rim brake version is 640 grams. And that's for a size 56. The fork only adds another 313 grams, so that's 953 grams for a frame and fork. That's bonkers. But Trek say that this is no bag of wet noodles either. The engineers worked long and hard to actually further increase the stiffness from that previous model. So it's been boosted from 86 Newton meters per degree at the head tube to 88 Newton meters per degree. And the bottom bracket stiffness has been boosted from 52 Newtons per millimeter up to 55 Newtons per millimeter on this disc version and the rim brake version is even stiffer, weirdly, that's 56 newtons per millimetre. So you could see then that in pure performance terms, the rim brake version does win out. It's ever so slightly lighter and it's ever so slightly stiffer. And it's interesting that Trek say they are still fully behind rim brakes, just as they are fully behind disc brakes. They say that there are advantages to both systems and that they're going to let the consumer decide which one's right for them. And you can't say fairer than that, really, can you? Now, it's not just about the SLR series that we have next to us now, because the Amonda is available at much lower price points. However, the original entry to the Amonda series, the S series frame, has now gone. But it's a good thing, because the SL, which was or is the next level up, will now be sold with models at similar prices to that original S series. And that is with the higher quality 500 series OCLV carbon fiber. Now there is, as you might imagine, a little bit of a weight penalty over the SLR, but the frame and forks are still super light. So the rim brake version is just 1,091 grams, the disc version, 1,149 grams, and the fork is just 436 grams. How have they got the weights so low then? Well, firstly, Trek have now actually got 25 years of experience of working with carbon fiber, and that's quite a lot for the bike industry. Then they've spent pretty much all the time since the 2014 Tour de France doing R&D and prototyping to get ready for this. And in that, they say they've done an awful lot of really advanced analysis, including two things that I'm not entirely sure what they are parameterized optimization and finite element analysis. I got a bit more of an idea about that one, but not much. What it means though, is that when we actually look at the frame before us now, firstly, the carbon fiber layup has been completely redone from the bottom up. And then we're also left with some really striking tube shapes. Now, one of the best ways, particularly about getting a really stiff bike, is actually to make the tube really wide and then put more material on the edges, so where it's best placed to brace against torsional flex. So you can see that really clearly at the head tube, and then also the whole way down the down tube. And so what we'd expect to find under this really rather lovely custom Project One paint job is that here you'd have a really super thin tube, but then here you have a much thicker one. If we look at the seat tube, we can see that it's quite square. And that's because Trek say that their optimization software showed that there are less twisting loads and therefore a square shape is the most efficient. And then my favorite bit of geekery. At the end of the top tube near the seat tube, we can see a concave section as opposed to the usual convex tube shape. Now Trek found out that by making a tube go in rather than bow out, they could significantly improve compliance, i.e. comfort. 
Now you can forget about any concerns about fragility though, because this bike comes with a lifetime warranty and it comes with the same weight restrictions as all Trek bikes, so 275 pounds or 125 kilos. And then Trek have also said actually that this is great for gravel riding. They've spec'd it with 28 mil wide tires on the disc version, slightly thinner on the rim brake version, 25 mil, but it does have the same clearance as this disc version, and that's thanks to the direct mount brakes. They've always been on the SLR, but they're now on the SL model as well. And that is a great thing, the wider tires, because it means you get a super comfortable ride, but you still got all the benefits of that torsional stiffness. Now, what else can I tell you about the frame then? Well, the disc version comes with 12 mil through axles. It's got flat mount disc calipers and it's designed around 160 mil disc brake rotors. Both rim and disc versions have Trek's Control Freak cable management system. So that is a way of using internal cable routing really simply and in any permutation you want. So hydraulic or electronic, or mechanical. Then both rim and disc versions obviously still share Trek's own bottom bracket design, so that's BB90, and that is a really good thing. Moment of truth then. Should we see what the complete bike weighs with my own skanky pedals on there? Ready? That's pretty bloody impressive for a stock disc bike, isn't it? Now, I also happen to have Alberto Contador's bike over there, so I think we should weigh that one as well. 6.5, whoa! 6.53. Now, I'm told that there's already 400 grams of ballast added to this to make it UCI legal. I have a feeling they're going to be adding some more before the start of the Tour de France. <laughs> well, there is then the new Trek Amanda, the lightest production frame set in the world with a disc version and also a rim brake version. This particular guy, in fact, is in with a pretty reasonable shout at winning the Tour de France in the next three weeks. Now, if you're into tech when it comes to bikes, then do make sure you subscribe to GCN. It's completely free, just click on the globe. And then if you're after some more content, why not check out that original Trek Imonda video from three years ago, where I was stuck in a neck brace. That one is just down there. Or to see a video with Alberto Contador teaching you how to climb, click just down there. <laughs>